I don't know. I believe I had it tilted a little bit that time on that corner. Let me see. Yeah. It's definitely off. Well, you can't be perfect all the time. Maybe I can straighten it up and widen it up and then I can put a little bit of uh, hot glue in that joint. Let's see what I can do with it here. Well, that's going to make the slot extra wide, but like I say, I can always hot glue it because at least now I can push it over and it's going to be straight right there. Uh, the only other thing I can do is go ahead and uh, put some filler back in here and recut it. But uh, I don't think I need to do that. It's on the bottom corner, and all I got to do is just put the, the hot glue right, right here in this to take up the space. So I think I'm going to live with that. Well, the more I th kept thinking about this corner here that I messed up, that I got the router a little bit on sideways here and cut it on an angle and I recut it here and this is the, the line where it's supposed to be right here uh, I got thinking I, I gotta fill that back up and recut it so I started to get the Bondo out and fill it up with Bondo and uh, that would have been the quickest simplest fastest easiest way to do it but I got to thinking I said let me try something different so I said uh, I happen to notice that this is a paint stirrer sticks that you can buy or they give them away actually a lot of times when you buy paint for stirring up paint. Oh wow, look at that, it's brown. Why is it brown? Why is this brown? This is, this is brown paint. This is brown paint. This is brown. This is freaking brown. This is brown paint. And it was just about the right size to fit in the groove. Uh, it's a little little tight fitting so I took one and I cut it down and I sanded it down a little bit make it just a little bit thinner so that it'll fit into the groove with just a little bit of tension not much and then I cut another little one to go right up here on this top side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some wood glue and I'm going to go ahead and put wood glue on it and glue it and this is going to take 24 hours for it to dry before I can cut it, but uh, since I got a nice clean edge and the wood is good and hard here, and I can look in here on this side, this side is what it's going to bond to because we're going to cut this side back out again with the slot cutter. And this is all wood right here. The, uh, this corner, the bondo was only basically on this corner here and on the outer edge. So uh, I'm going to get the wood glue here, and we're going to go ahead and glue this. So uh, let's see. I don't want to overdo this with glue, but I want to get enough in there. And I'll just take and work it in there just to get it in the slot. Oh, 
All right, that should be enough in the slot. Then what I'm going to do is go ahead and coat the wood. I already drew a line on here. I don't know if you can see it because of the light, but so I, I know basically where it's going to go. And just make sure we give a good little coat on here. All right. Put it in the slot. Tap it in. Clean off the excess glue. Okay, now I'm going to put a little piece in this top edge, basically do the same thing, just spread a little bit of glue on it. And wipe off the excess glue. Now that's completely filled up that slot with wood. And it should adhere to the particle board pretty good. And once it dries, I'll come back with a saw and saw it off and then sand it flush and then we can come back and cut a new T-molding slot and hopefully this time I'll keep it straight. Well, it's been 24 hours and our wood that I put in the slot here ought to be uh, good and dry and bonded so now I'm going to have to cut it off flush with the cabinet uh, with the T-molding slot and sand it down and then get the router and recut it. I'm going to cut it with this uh, this is a Harbor Freight oscillating saw and it has a blade on here for wood or metal and this is a, a neat little uh, saw here it oscillates it doesn't spin it just goes back and forth real fast you can actually, when you turn it on, you can actually put your finger on the blade and it won't cut you. Uh, but when you put it on like wood or whatever, the oscillating going back and forth is just like a, a saw going back and forth on it real quick. And it saws pretty good. So even though this blade is a little war, I need to get a, a new one. It ought to be sharp enough to get the job done. So uh, let me go ahead and cut this off. <laughs>
Okay, well that went pretty quick. Made a pretty good job of it. It's fairly smooth. Uh, right around this corner edge right here, I'm going to have to sand it down a little bit. But I'll get the sander out, sand this down flat. And then we'll be able to get the, uh, the router back out. And hopefully the second time is going to be the charm. I don't want to have to do it three times. And we'll go ahead and we'll cut this slot in here like it's supposed to be. Yeah, let's go ahead and sand it. Okay, that should do it. Now we can uh, get the router back out and give it a second try. Okay, well here goes nothing. Let's hope I can get it straight this time. Well, it's funny how just a little bit being off can make a big difference. But I can live with that. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay, that's taken care of. Um, what we're going to do today is we still have the rest of the T-molding slots uh, up near the top of the cabinet here uh, it, it's the gap was a little wide and the T-molding doesn't fit real tight and it was a little spongy up on this top corner here so what I did I went ahead and I, I put boards here and clamps and uh, clamped this back together pulled it together and used a new piece of T-molding to put in the slot to get it to where it fits good and snug uh, and that's where I'm going to leave it and then I'm going to take again the mem wax and just going to squirt mem wax all the way around the T-molding groove all the way back up to where we stopped uh, about right here uh, this had been treated but uh, we didn't treat any of this because we hadn't removed the T-molding yet so uh, we're going to do this side and uh, we're going to have to let this set and dry uh, probably a good 24 hours at least and uh, then we can remove the clamps but let's go ahead and set up and get the mem wax out and uh, I'll just show you how I do it again in case you haven't been watching the videos and haven't seen how I did it uh, on, on the ends right here. And we'll just go through this little section here, and then off camera, I'll do the other side if the other side needs it. I haven't checked the other side yet to see how tight the new T-molding is going to fit in it. But uh, if it's any areas where it's a little wide, a little spongy, I might have to do the same thing to it. But uh, we'll find out. All right, once again, we're going to use the Memwax wood hardener. This is great stuff. If you have particle board that has got some water damage and uh, or humidity damage and or just old age and it's starting to flake, uh, this stuff here 
Uh, you put it on, it soaks into the wood, penetrates the wood, and it gets rock hard. And uh, that's, that's the way to go if you're going to be able to save the wood. If not, if it's too far gone, then you might as well just go ahead and cut the wood out and replace it. But this is some great stuff. Uh, saves you a lot of times from having to do that. Okay, and what I do is I, I put it in a squirt bottle, like a ketchup, mustard, squirt bottle or whatever, and uh, fill it about half full. Makes it easier to uh, to do. And uh, all I'm going to do is lay it on here in the groove and just let it seep in as I move it along. And I don't want it to spill over the sides because it'll get on the side art and will probably mess things up because I'm sure it will um, eat into vinyl. Okay, now you just do like I just did and you're going to have to apply several coats. It may take three or four coats. Let it soak in for two, three minutes in between passes. And um, you just keep doing it until the wood where it penetrates starts to get a, a glossy, shiny look to it. And when it does that, then you know you've got enough rosin soaked into the wood. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and down here where I've got the blocks, I'm going to go ahead and, and do this. Just let it run down into the T-molding groove. And I let it run a little bit down the side here. Don't want to do that. If you let it get any run, I want to wipe it off immediately. Okay. Okay, well you get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and keep doing this and uh, get it all saturated and then once it dries we'll be able to take the clamps off and see what it looks like. Okay, well it's been 24 hours so I'm going to go ahead and take these clamps loose and we'll find out how the wood hardener worked. So far, so good. And this one right here is the one I'm worried about because I, I spilt some in here and it may have stuck on the side here, but won't know till I take it loose here. Nope, that one's okay. Yeah, I did put wax on them to try to keep it from sticking if some did spill. So uh, that trick with the wax, like I did before, does the trick. Okay. Well, let's see how I did. Um, hopefully now the T-molding is going to fit in here kind of tight. Oh yeah, 
that's much tighter than it was. Yep. Oh yeah. I would say that's a success. So um, that Memwax, if, if you do have uh, your T-molding crack is a little bit too wide and your T-molding is loose, then uh, that seems to be a good remedy. I know a lot of people fill the crack up and recut it with a slot cutter, but all you got to do is just squeeze it back together with wooden clamps just like this and and uh, yeah that's gonna make a nice tight fit plus the wood hardener I believe soaks into the wood and causes the wood grain to expand a little bit and then it gets hard so um, yeah that's that's the trick that's the way I'm gonna do it from now on but if you ever do get a, a little spot here and there that's you know it doesn't help then you can always go to route with the hot glue gun so okay this side is looking good now and all, all I'm going to do is I'm going to retouch up the paint uh, when I when I paint the uh, the side of the cabinet around the bottom where we did the um, repairs with the Bondo I'll go ahead and I'll come back and I'll you know give us a, a little light coat of black paint just so in case you put the T-molding on so you won't see any wood around the edges. So I'm going to look at the other side and see what the other side looks like. And if I have to, I'll do the same process over there. Next thing you're going to need, if you have any areas where the T-molding groove is loose, uh, and I still have a few on here on the bottom edge, rest of them I think I've taken care of but there may be a few places where I'm still going to need a glue gun so you need a glue gun comes in handy and you don't want to put T-molding on exclusively with a glue gun if you ever have to take it off again it's, it's a mess but if you have a couple areas where it's a problem where you, they're a little it's a little loose you can go ahead and just put a little bit in there just to, to hold it in there tight in certain places I'm going to go ahead and put it in here and see how tight it fits. And I know I got some loose spots here, like I said, because I didn't put Bondo in here and I didn't squeeze it together. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a glue in a couple of these wide places here. Just along the bottom. And from here on up, I should be fine. So, hot glue, you have a little bit of working time with it. But you don't want to take too long. And if you got a real loose spot, you want to make sure it's down flush and you might have to hold it in place until it cools. Once it cools, you're going to be okay. Well, I've found this stuff. Uh, it's a contact cement called UHUPOR. And uh, Used to get it at Michael's Arts and Crafts, but they don't sell it anymore. So I've been buying it here lately. Uh, you, you can buy it on you, um, eBay. This stuff here you can put on foam, plastic, wood, leather, glass. You name it, it's good for it. And I actually use this in the arcade uh, on most of the driving games to have the T-molding come loose down at the base of the seat under the bottom edge where people take their feet and they sit in the seats and they, they, they put their uh, the heel of their shoe up on the side of the cabinet and they push down and they wind up pulling the T-molding off. So uh, I, I put this on the T-molding of those games in the arcade and it's held up very well. This has been an Arcade Fix Tips and Tricks from past videos, 
you may have missed. Have you had your arcade fixed today?